Hi, so on this one I thought we would talk about the SWS, the Sun Workstation. And this one's probably going to be a bit dry because I don't have an SWS. And that's kind of part of the problem. So, what I do have is some documentation. And the documentation hopefully shows the SWS in line. And it uses a private Ethernet cable, as we discussed in the last video, to control the iOS, or to start the iOS. And then the other Ethernet is for the site Ethernet. This Ethernet line here, this private Ethernet line, should only ever have the SWS on it, much like the E10000. Normally, the system shipped with a Spark 5 system, Spark Station 5. And it was configured with an internal floppy drive, a 10B2 Ethernet card, and that's about it. They would also periodically, or no, they would always ship them with a modem. Where's the picture of the modem? <laughs> or a NetBlazer router. I'm not entirely positive what this is. I think it might be some kind of ISDN router, but the... Oh no, there's the modem, there's the NetBlazer. The modem is there so that Cray can log in remotely and manage your system. Now, these manuals I got from my friend Jim. He loaned them to me. And along with these manuals came some interesting pictures of somebody's site install. So the first is a processor cabinet. You can see the Y1 cables. Some lovely uh, raised flooring here. Hey, look. There's a SunSpark disk array. <clears throat> anyway. And then this scan shows the back of the iOS cabinet. You can see the big cable chain there. And just at the bottom of the frame is the Ethernet. And that's the Sun workstation with its 10B2 Thinnet Ethernet cable right there. And that's the rub because no SWS. And I went hunting and I don't have anything that's 10B2 amongst all of the crap that I have. I do not have a single 10B2 card. I don't have any coax cable. I don't have any T's. I don't have any terminators. I have Jack Diddley Squat. I do have for the system a few options however. There's always options. Oh, I did like this as well. The uh, Spark Specification sheet from October 1995. So the options that I have are a Spark 1 Plus. This is closer to the Spark 5 in form factor, being a pizza box system. However, I think I just opened it the wrong bloody way. There it goes. There are a few issues which may be immediately evident. The first is, I have no discs. Second is, I have no RAM. Uh, third, which is not a guarantee, but let's be honest, a certainty, the NVRAM will be dead. So I could make this a usable system, but no 10B2. So I'm leaning against that one. <clears throat> the other possibility, oh hell with it, is this guy here. A Sun Ultra 1. Now this is a later revision machine, also no TMB2, but unlike the Spark Station 1 Plus, I'll flip it around so I can get the damn case off. I have RAM, I have a processor, I have a floppy drive, I have an internal hard disk, there's uh, two spud trays there but only the lower disk is there. I have a strong recollection that this machine works. I have no recollection where the hell it came from. This would be a good candidate, 
there's nothing wrong with this. It's definitely closer to the Spark Station 5 than anything else I have. The Spark one's just a bit too early, and I'm reasonably sure it works. But I think what I might go with is... This guy, an Ultra 2. Now this guy has, and this is another gem of a case to remove, and I am saying that with gritted teeth. Come on, you bastard. Why did they design these? There. God above. This machine is a bit more impressive. We have two processors. Come on. There. A reasonable amount of RAM. We've got two drives. An optical media as well as a floppy drive. At least I think there's a floppy disk there. No, there isn't. Oh well, I can steal one from the Ultra. Go from the uh, Spark Station 1. Now this one, I know works. And I know where I got it from. Which, you know, is neither here nor there, frankly. But I do know that this machine works. And being more recent, there's a much better chance that the NVRAM isn't completely shot. I suspect I'll probably try and do it with this system here. Now I have software for these units for the Sun workstations. I haven't tried anything yet, but they should work on any Solaris system. The way the SWS controls the J90 is through um, obviously the local Ethernet. It serves as a boot server. It's much like the um, Oh, good lord, what do you call it? The front-end system for the E10,000 SPI, SMS, what's it called? Anyway, too many three-letter acronyms I have managed to forget. The J90, when it boots, it pulls from boot P to get a DHCP address and it gets a NFS address and a pointer to a kernel. It will then NFS the kernel, and the system will come up. I believe. I think. Probably. Based on all of the information that I've read so far, and a lot of educated guesses, particularly in drawing from the E10,000. So all the system really needs to have is boot P and NFS D, and then of course the appropriate kernels and file system structure that needs to control the J90. So I could actually use a Linux machine if I have all of the software installed in the right locations, software being the uh, boot kernels and uh, configuration files for the J90. I'm going to start with this. I believe, and I might be completely full of crap, but I believe that there is some diagnostic software on the J90 CD that can be used to talk to the individual iOS systems and figure out what's going on. Maybe. And this is where the wheels start to come off. But we'll get to that in a later video. If you have been, thank you so very much for watching. I apologize, this one's a bit brief and a bit dry, but a couple more suns, that's interesting, right? Right? You guys have a fantastic day. Thanks.